She grabbed the world's attention and affection age 14. In 1976, this Romanian gymnast scored the first perfect 10 in Olympic history and is still a sporting legend. But her life in Romania was troubled and she was once again headline news as she chose to defect to the US, risking her life to escape the brutal regime of Nicolae Ceausescu. Nadia Comaneci, many thanks for being with us on The Global Conversation. You're at the pinnacle of your career in 76, but still your fame endures. Why do you think you're such an intriguing character? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think uh, it's because I didn't disappear. I uh, competed in the Olympics in 1976 and 1980. Uh, then I was still involved in gymnastics because I did some gymnastics uh, shows uh, over the years. Uh, then I retired actually from competition and shows, but uh, I'm still a part of gymnastics. Would you say it's what was more influential in forming who you are now? Was it the gymnastics or the period of history that your life has been inscribed in, in terms of the communist era and the fall of communism? What's been more influential in making you? I think everything together. Uh, of course, it started with the uh, Olympics because uh, people didn't know who is Nadia and what is Romania on the map anyway. And uh, there was a big interest about me after that uh, because I was 14 and a half and uh, uh, people wanted to know more about me. Why is she so good? <laughs> then I was still around. People found, you know, that the revolution happened in 1989 and... Uh, I barely left uh, the country uh, just a little before the revolution, uh, not knowing that uh, this will happen. But we're commemorating those revolutions now. Do they strike a particular chord with you? It's a part of the history, you know. I, uh, I don't think about uh, that every day. Uh, uh, it's been a lot of years past uh, since then. It doesn't feel that uh, it's been that long because uh, I go back to Romania six times a year. I do a lot of projects there. So do you feel more Romanian or more American? Uh, no, I, I'm a Romanian, definitely, and I'm adopted by, uh, by the States. We asked our nine audience to send in questions, and obviously many are fascinated by your career. We um, received this question from Dinara Ratsova, who says, don't you think that the Cold War between the West and the communist, communist bloc had its share in your success? Do you feel part of that tension? I didn't feel any tension when I was competing because I was a kid. Uh, the only thing I felt was, uh, oh, I hope I'm going to do a good routine here because I know I prepare my, uh, uh, everything I've done in a gym. Uh, I don't think you feel that when you're a kid. Uh, maybe when you grow up and you become an adult, you look back and you see that. But uh, I was seeing it as a challenge. Well, that's interesting because your, your trainer, Bella Carolli and Marta, his wife, have been criticised in the past for um, having too tough training regimes. Uh, did you feel that? No, I didn't feel that. I actually did a lot more than they were asking me to do. And I think about, uh, you know, when Bella used to say, uh, today we do five routines on beam and I used to do seven. Uh, so I could do more than he was asking to. Uh, I, I don't mind working hard. I don't complain that I work hard. Um, I think that uh, you have to work hard to get to that level. Um, I, uh, I think that uh, I'm not looking for the easy way to do things. <laughs> and I'm proud about that. You became such a famous figure in Romania and worldwide. Did you feel that pressure? No, I didn't feel at all because Romania was, uh, you know, was closed. They were, you know, if people were interested to come and... Uh, um, find out more about me, they couldn't easily come uh, in the country to do that. So, you know, I was, uh, after I competed in the Games, uh, I, we celebrated for two days and then we went back to the gym. So I didn't have, I, I had no knowledge about what was happening outside. So you had no, you weren't aware of the massive worldwide impact you'd made not in really. 1976? No, no, not really. Not then. But I realised later. Do you regret not knowing that or did it help you? No, I don't. I don't regret anything. But when you scored the seven perfect tens, we all know the, the story well. It's almost mythical that the balls can actually show a ten. What did you think when you looked at them? I always say about the fact that I don't watch the scoreboard because I feel um, how I did the routine. I thought I did a pretty good routine. Um, the routine was, um, I say it had a little extra Nadia touch because I did everything with a little more amplitude. 
even though it was the same routine uh, that everybody was doing. But I think the person before me got a 9.95, and because mine was a little more amplitude than everything I've done, I guess there was no place to go but the 10. So, as I said, our online audience sent us a lot of in questions, and we received this question from Gervais Bosuku, who wants to know the secret of your motivation, because you were a driven <laughs> person then, you're obviously a very driven person now. Uh, the, the secret, do you have a secret of your motivation? <laughs> no, but I'm not, I'm not an Olympic gymnast. <laughs> So I, I think I had the motivation because I, when, I, when I was five and a half, even before I started gymnastics, I was in kindergarten and I, uh, there was a tricycle competition and I just wanted to win that. So I won that. So I had that going, but uh, I think the hard work and the hours in the gym uh, pile into uh, to the success. Um, I think when I look back that um, sports is amazing any any sport is amazing for kids. Why? Because it gives you a structure and organize you and uh, uh, gives you um, uh, the sense of uh, uh, setting goals. Were you ever approached and encouraged to take any sort of perf kind of performance enhancing drug? Mm, I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> uh, no, I've heard about uh, that in different sports much later in my life. Uh, I, uh, in gym gymnastics is, you know, it's a delicacy sport. You don't have to carry the beam on your back. <laughs> your fame, obviously, especially after 76, brought you to the attention of the Ceausescus, the dictators, well, the dictator who was reigning in your country. How did that make you feel? Were you aware of what was going on in Romania at that time? Mm, no, not really. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I retired in... Uh, officially in 1984, and I was still involved in gymnastics. Uh, I did coaching, I uh, worked in the Federation for a couple of years. I wasn't aware about what was going on. But I guess you were, you were a, a treasure representing a troubled country, a treasure to a dictator. If you didn't realize it at the time, does it make you feel uncomfortable now? Um, I, I don't know if I was a treasure. I was somebody who was very well known because of my um, sport accomplishments. Um, I, you know, when you live in a country that's a communist country, you try to, uh, to make your life the best you can. Uh, I thought that maybe uh, um, it wasn't quite right to not be able to uh, travel outside of uh, Romania because I was invited. I was a... Um, in the Athletes Commission of the IOC for a couple of years. And I was invited to go to meetings and other events that they had. And uh, I wasn't allowed. Um, I had no one to ask because I didn't know who to ask. Why am I not allowed? And then I thought in time, I would probably like to leave. Like your trainer, Bella Caroli, and his wife did back in 1981. They defected. Uh, when you're on a tour of the US. How, how did that make you feel when, when he left? Because he invited you to, to go with him, did he not? Um, I was very sad when he decided not to go back. Uh, but um, I found out about that right in the last day. And uh, I just, I couldn't imagine doing that. I wasn't ready to do anything like that because I couldn't see myself uh, anywhere else but Romania and with my family. Uh, he, was, we, he was outside of the States and then it was you know, easy to make a decision, you just stay there. Um, I think that after that, uh, my situation of going out of the country became very difficult. And within the country itself, did you feel a sense of freedom within Romania or were you surveyed? Um, there were some rumors that a lot of people are uh, watched. Um, I think I probably was. I mean, this is what it is, and if, if it is how it is, uh, I'm just going to live with it. People imagine that after your Olympic success, being a figurehead of your country, you'd have lived in the lap of luxury. Was that the case? No, that wasn't the case, no. Uh, no, I didn't have a... I mean, I had a house, but uh, I had to pay uh, all the way until I was turning 60 to be, make my payments. Uh, I didn't make public my uh, uh, fortune or not fortune. Uh, 
Uh, I didn't think uh, money matter because I did gymnastics because I wanted to do it. And so then you, years later in 89, you made a fundamental decision, which was to defect. What were the circumstances that led to that? I made a very bold decision uh, at that time because I knew it was very dangerous and uh, scary. Uh, but, you know, like in gymnastics, I like to try new skills. I wanted to do something, you know, if I don't do it, nobody else is going to do that for me. The winds of change were sweeping across Eastern Bloc countries. The Berlin Wall was probably falling at about that time. Were you getting that information? Were you aware that there was change taking place? Not too much, no. And so then, when you defected, you risked your life. Your trainer's defection had been obviously a lot easier, as you said. Yeah, a little bit easier. <laughs> How long did it take for you to leave Romania? And what were you feeling as you were crossing the border, leaving Romania into Hungary? Um, everything happened uh, pretty fast, actually, because the entire thing took about two days total. Uh, you just go. You just go and uh, you have somebody, there's a guide that tells you, I think you should go there, you should go here. Uh, I think people were aware uh, that I was, I left, but nobody knew where I was actually. Uh, I, con I contacted uh, the US Embassy in uh, v uh, Vienna, I think. <laughs> See, it's been a long time. <laughs> Uh, and they helped me go to the States. Uh, it happened very fast. And uh, after that, uh, the revolution happened in Romania, you know, very shortly after that. You, you're, you don't seem at all traumatized by the experience, although it must have been terrifying because you're, you really have put your life at risk. Uh, I'm not traumatized now. No, I think back and I'm uh, happy that uh, it had a happy ending. <laughs> Uh, but I'm the kind of person who makes a decision. I, I don't doubt it, first of all. And I just go all the way, uh, hoping that uh, it's going to be good. So when the Ceausescu regime fell, as you said, you were in the States. Mm -hmm. Can you remember where you were, how you heard about it? Um, I think I heard it. Uh, I was with... Uh, I was doing... I was preparing some uh, gymnastic shows, I think, at the time. And uh, we were watching, uh, uh, worry about what uh, was happening. Uh, because I was thinking about my family and all my friends. And uh, it was a big, big, big move for the country. Were you able to contact your family at the no, time? No, I so didn't, you didn't, I didn't contact my family uh, for about a month or two. And how did you feel personally about this regime falling, about the Ceausescu's? Did it fill you with joy or confusion? Uh, I didn't know how to feel about it. Uh, I was thinking that, uh, you know, this is what people want. This is that what the country wants. I hope it's going to be good uh, to the end of time. And uh, I think everybody wanted freedom, I guess, uh, like me. So I'd like to bring in again some of the voices we've received, some of our online community. And we received this question from Mauro Iannelli, who says, when you passed from Romania to the US, and they put it, you came practically from oppression to freedom. And this is a difficult question, but how did your existence change? How did you deal with that? I think that the, the, the good people around you that want the best for you is the most important thing. And I was lucky to have that. And uh, uh, the fact that I was able to go back to Romania because Romania was a free country was also very fulfill fulfilling for me. I've been to the States and I've been outside of Romania when I was competing, so there wasn't something shocking new for me. Uh, I kind of, I knew the, 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 the free world, how it was working. I just had to figure out what I want to do, where I can help. We received this question from Adrian Russo, who says, going back through your career and the move to the US, what is the one major thing you'd have done differently? When I look back at everything that happened in my life, it, I don't think that would be one thing that I would have done differently. Because every little thing that I've done connected the dots to where I, I am today.
It's absolutely true because there is a photo of you, it's incredible, in 1976 with your now husband kissing you on the cheek <laughs> in Madison Square yeah. Gardens. Your life almost seems to have a fairy tale quality to it. Is that something you think? Do you feel you've had a charmed existence? Fairy tale, yeah. It, uh, you know, when you think it, it is a fairy tale, but it's like I don't want my life to be scripted as a because it becomes too cheesy if it's a fairy tale story. Uh, I think that um, what I brought to uh, my generation and the generation after me is that um, that motivation that uh, you started with, that uh, you should never give up uh, when uh, it gets harder. You're always on the road now. You support a lot of charities. As I was saying earlier, you feel a need to give back. What is it in you that feels that you have to give back to such a degree? I see how difficult it is for a lot of kids to, to be able to pursue what they want to do. And uh, I think that's the part where I can help. Uh, it's either through my foundation in Romania, uh, it's either through Special Olympics that I was um, uh, open to by my husband when I arrived to the States or to Muscular Dystrophy Association. And uh, I learned a lot from that. And now that brings me to a question from Elizabeth Booth, who asks very precisely, do you ever envisage being involved in the training of the Romanian national team? Yeah, I go all the time back to Romania and I am in contact with uh, the girls. I send them texts uh, uh, all the time, you know, when they competed at the World Gymnastic Championship. I try to encourage them and say, come on, you, you'll be good. Just think of your best routine. So I, I cannot not be connected mm -hmm. because uh, that's my family. And your son, you've opened obviously a very beautiful chapter in your life. You have a young child. And I'd like to end with this question from Anda Georgiou, who says, what does your son feel about the great achievements in gymnastics? And this isn't only you, it's also your husband, Bart Connor, who's also an Olympian. You know, I'll tell you something very funny because my uh, uh, little one, who's eight and a half now, um, when he was going to kindergarten, when he was four and a half, um, I, we didn't tell him anything about us. We said, you know, uh, when the time comes and he's going to ask, we just going to say what we've done. And... Uh, he comes back, back from kinder school, uh, uh, kindergarten and says, Mom, Dad, do you know you're famous? <laughs> and I said, uh, yes. <laughs> so that was his uh, uh, own uh, thinking. Uh, and then uh, I found uh, an album of some pictures with me from the Olympics in 76. So I tried to, you know, show him. And I said, do you know who that is? So I'm 14 there, and he said, it's you. So he knew, and I said, how do you know? And he said, I just know. Nadia Kamenech, many thanks. Thank you.